Hey guys, Riley out or Taylor here, and I'm back with another Division video. And in this video, we're going to be revisiting the underground, and hopefully you'll decide for yourself whether you want to return just like I did. So the Division expansion known as Underground released on June the 28th for PC and Xbox One owners, and 30 days later for PS4 owners. Within the expansion, not only did you get underground, but you also received five gear sets, which unfortunately was cut down to four because they dropped the blind gear set. They also introduced a new incursion to bring the total to two, and that was Dragon's Nest. They did also include a heroic difficulty for Falcon's Lost and Dragon's Nest, but this again was later disabled because of balancing issues. And they also introduced a few new challenge mode missions. This included Hudson Refugee Camp and Queen's Tunnel. Anyway, less of that. Why did I go back to the underground? Well, the other day, for some random reason, I was reading through the 1.6 patch notes and came across an interesting one. The way it used to work is the only way you could rank up within the underground was by completing the mission and collecting intel. This has now changed and they've now introduced underground experience for getting kills. Before that, I believe you only used to get open world experience but at this point it didn't really make sense because there's no such thing as proficiency caches. So when I actually jumped back in, I was on my PS4 account that hadn't even touched the underground. So I started at level 1 and I just sort of played through the first mission, which is actually the really cool one, the end is nigh. And it's got all of the sort of like glow in the dark and ultraviolet lights and things like that. So it's one of the coolest missions within the underground. And as I was doing this, it just felt really refreshing and new. All of the people that grinded this game mode to level 40 might not feel the same way as I did, but if you did have a second account that's not explored the underground, it might be worth going back in. So let's call it the second time around. When you're revisiting the underground with a fresh character, you're gonna notice some differences. They now don't have the vendor with level restricted items. This has been replaced with a cache vendor that sells them for 200 Phoenix credits each. And going through the missions within the underground, like I've already said, you now get underground experience per kill and for doing other little things. Obviously, you're still gonna get your experience for completing the mission and picking up the intel but with the kill experience now it makes it an easier grind and a lot more fun and obviously you will now receive something called an underground proficiency cache and I've just learned from the community manager Matt Schotcher that you have a chance of getting although a small chance you have the chance of getting any exotic item within the game within these caches now you get a underground cache at the end of a mission or for completing it and you also get one every time you level up. And as you're leveling up, you're gonna unlock the chance to add some modifiers to each phase and the chance to run up to three phases. A phase is pretty much the same as a mission, but you can run three joined together and then add multiple directives to increase the amount of experience you're getting once you complete it. This again also increases the amount of field proficiency caches you're gonna be able to get along with technically increasing the chance of you getting an exotic. And that's the thing I want to stress about, another place or another chance to get exotics that we didn't really know about. Obviously, we all knew that you could get the Thompson, a Tommy gun variant within the underground, but what we didn't know is that there's actually a chance to get any exotic item from the underground via its underground proficiency caches. But I feel doing the underground is a bit of a breath of fresh air. We've all been playing Last Stand a lot recently, and we all know how aggravating it can be when a game doesn't go your way. And the fact that the underground can be a quick alternative. We know that survival can drag out to almost an hour for you to get your survival caches and your chance to get exotics, and we know that Last Stand matches can last up to 15 minutes. Underground can be done in a considerably short amount of time, whether you're running with a group or even if you're doing it solo. Along with the time scale, some of the environments within the underground are absolutely amazing. Just to name a few off my head, the first one you do is actually called The End Is Nigh, which I was on about earlier in the video. It's an absolutely stunning hideout. 
Along with that, there's a bank as well, which you come across, and it's just super cool. They've put so much effort into it, and I just don't feel it gets the love it deserves. So overall, guys, what I'm trying to say is maybe it's worth revisiting some of the expansions and activities that you haven't quite been into because of last stand consuming most of your time. But if you do jump between activities, then it's only going to keep the game fresh for you whilst we're waiting for the next patch. If you want me to revisit survival, then make sure you let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, then make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see plenty more of The Division, then make sure you hit the subscribe button for all future Division content. But until next time guys, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.